glycolysis we will be doing glycolysis also known as emden meyerhof pathway there are total 10 steps phase 1 and phase 2 so in phase 1 it is energy investment phase we are going to use atp here this is rule of business for any business we have to first invest only then we are able to gain out of it so any catabolic pathway which is going to give energy in the end is going to use energy in the starting so second phase will produce atp right so let's look at first phase glucose to glucose 6 phosphate enzyme is glucokinase or hexokinase then glucose 6 phosphate to fructose 6 phosphate isomerase simple isomerase they are isomers of each other fructose 6 to fructose 1 6 here also kinase phosphofructokinase 1 that is short form PFK1, which is rate limiting enzyme. And note here that ATP is used here also to add phosphate. Here also ATP used to add one more phosphate. So ATP used at hexokinase, ATP used at PFK1. Do remember we will use this in energetics. ATP used at two places, two enzymes, hexokinase or glucokinase and PFK1. Then fourth step is aldolase A. So aldolase A is in glycolysis. We will do in fructose aldolase B. Okay, later we'll do. Now fructose 1,6 broken down to DHAP and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Then DHAP also gets converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate so that we have two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Okay. So just remember that in phase 1, two ATPs are used, one at hexokinase, other at PFK1. Now in phase 2, everything is 2. Why? Because we are going to start with two molecules we are going to start with two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So everything is 2 in phase 2. Now in phase 2, this glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate gets converted to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. So we are adding phosphate here, but ATP is not used. Phosphate is not taken from ATP. This is very, very important step. Question asked, which enzyme of glycolysis can use inorganic phosphate? Most of the enzymes cannot use inorganic phosphate. Most of the enzymes take phosphate from ATP. But this enzyme will take phosphate from inorganic phosphate. The name of enzyme is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase as it is dehydrogenase. So NAD forms NADH. And this, these are two NADH. Later, they will go into ETC to give how many ATPs? 5 ATPs. Then, phosphoglycerate kinase enzyme and 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate -bisphosph -bisphosph will be losing 1-phosphate. Who will take this phosphate? ADP will take this phosphate and ATP will be formed. So, this is ATP formation happening. Whenever ATP formation occurs without ETC, this is called substrate level phosphorylation. I repeat, whenever ATP formation occurs without ETC, it is called substrate level phosphorylation. So without requiring the complex ETC chain, directly ATPs are formed at the level of substrate. Directly ATP formed at the level of substrate Whenever there is involvement of ADP or ATP, whether ATP is used, see here ATP used, then also kinase. Here ATP produced, here also we have kinase. 
phosphoglycerate kinase, short form PG kinase. So we are done with seventh step. Coming to eighth step, now three phosphoglycerate gets converted to two phosphoglycerate by phosphoglycerate mutase. Okay, this is intramolecular transfer from number three to number two position. Okay, no change happening. So this is isomerase enzyme. Okay, it is isomerase isomerization happening by mutase enzyme. Mutase will always do intramolecular transfer within the molecule. So it is already written here, isomerization happening. Next, 2-phosphoglycerate gets converted to phosphoenol. Can you see enol here? So enolase is the enzyme. Phosphoenol pyruvate, two molecules. Then last enzyme, pyruvate kinase, which converts phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate. So we have 2 ADP gets converted to 2 ATP. Again, ATP getting formed. ATP formation is happening. So enzyme is a kinase and substrate level phosphorylation is occurring here. So we have two steps of substrate level phosphorylation, right? So